Enzo, which is about my net zero. As a solar energy entrepreneur and a successful exit from the London Stock Exchange. Are you serious? I mean, <laughs> and I was young, youthful, brash. कुछ तो लोग कहेंगे लोगों का काम है कहना छोड़ो ये सब बातें अपना काम है करते जाना सो दैट लाइट दैट इज पावरिंग यू बिहाइंड यू एक्चुअली माइट बी कमिंग फ्रॉम माई सोलर प्लांट टूडे आई हैव सेवन प्लांट माई स्मॉलेस्ट प्लांट विल बी लाइक टू हंड्रेड फुटबॉल फील्ड पुट टूगेदर my watch which tracks my steps uh, minzo as an app tracks your carbon footprint and how much carbon does that mean and then nudge you subtly to say oh maybe you can reduce this first is reduce but whatever we can't reduce minzo helps you plant your own forest boond boond se bharta sagar exactly like by small actions we have got the earth global warming by small actions we can reverse it to actually ensure that there is a planet available for our next generations as everyone else says you know don't follow entrepreneurship because it's sexy are you for real <laughs> <laughs> we are like a goldilocks planet join us on rabai rashi foundation podcast as we dive into the dynamic world of renewable energy and climate advocacy Vitania Singhal She's a trailblazer in the field. She has a stellar track record as a solar energy entrepreneur and a successful exit from the London Stock Exchange. Are you serious? I mean <laughs> London Stock Exchange. Well, let me talk about that. Yes, but I'm serious. <laughs> okay. So Tanya brings unparalleled expertise to the table recognized as one of the asia's top influencers is a notable figure in climate policy kitta kaam kar raha hai yaar this is amazing <laughs> and she is she is passionately driving the transition to a sustainable future aapka bahut bahut swagat hai tanya thank you rashi i really really appreciate the kind words and happy to be here wonderful okay are you for real <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so to start with tanya tell us about yourself sure you know, and what initiated your interest in this you know renewable energy sector yeah how yeah. did it lead to the creation of solarize and tell us also about your journey your family life your education over to you yeah, yeah thank you rashi and uh thank you for that nice and candid intro you know i'm already feeling top of the world but uh, let me try and take you back a little bit in history so i've been born and brought up in delhi um from a small middle class family parents have always treated me like uh, that tomboy who can achieve whatever she wants and empowered me to believe in myself uh, education in delhi went to iit delhi uh, in engineer by background and after iit i went to bcg the boston consulting group and there i think uh, in four years i like worked across sectors learned so much learned how to turn businesses make not making money into making money and and had a very diverse set of experience almost i on i'll say i was on steroids of learning there and one part of my journey there was doing this um, mega trend study for india at 75 about what's the future of infrastructure for india and like a typical 2 by 2 that consultants make there was like all different things in that 2 by 2 wind port roads and then there was solar like a rising star on extreme top you know i was like i did the analysis i did the data um, crunching behind it and i estimated that in 2007 when solar prices were 18 rupees a unit that it will be cheaper than coal and to give you a perspective at that time solar was almost four and a half five times the price of coal so i took my analysis to a lot of firms to say you should invest in this and this is the way to go but everybody looked at me and shocked me like consultant eh? 
consultant has come over you know like any other analysis this is all it is but that thing that thought stayed with me and then within my bcg tenure there was another hit that happened like a professor uh, had come and he showed a map of india and he put a small box on the tar desert of india and said that if you just cover 7% of the indian tar desert with solar panels the amount of power you can generate can power the whole of india you know those two things kind of did something to me the fact that nobody believed my analysis and it was such a big potential waiting out there that i decided let me jump into it you know what worst can happen i'm and i was young youthful brash and everybody around me was like are you crazy you want to enter infrastructure you know infrastructure is never um, taken as woman friendly or a woman startup or stuff like that but i was very lucky that i found my co-founders and you know he james was my co-founder actually started bcg in india so who believed in what i wanted to do and we started our journey together obviously it wasn't a bed of roses the first few years were very tough we actually had to shut down the first firm we started because the tech didn't work but then we kept going kept going and solar rise was born in 2014 so the persistence paid and uh, solar rise was a very unique business model which was about building solar assets and powering the grid almost replacing coal at its source so that light that is powering you behind you actually might be coming from my solar plant but you have not installed anything on your roof right it's actually directly coming through the grid and that's what we did and we kept at it we eventually built seven plants across india uh, raised about 2000 odd crore of capital both debt and equity we found investors who really believed in our vision and slowly 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 2015 I built my solar plant at five rupees, which was cheaper than coal at that time, and reached my vision five years earlier. You know, I predicted twenty twenty and two thousand fifteen. I reached that, and um, today I have uh, seven plants. Uh, they, are, you know, to give you a perspective, a typical my smallest plant will be like two hundred football fields put together. That's the size of the plant, you know, and and imagine that covered with just panels. solar panels you know and, and generating electricity so that's the scale at which we operate and last year um we actually found a buyer who wanted to consolidate our portfolio with another asian firm and list it on the london stock exchange so with that we uh, monetized the assets and gave the exit to our investors and proved that solar actually makes money for the investors and it's a sustainable solution cheaper than any conventional form of power so you know green clean cheap power and that's when um, after the exit i was like okay set in life done ab to chill marungi but i think for people like you and me that's not something uh, that exists and i'd been struggling with this uh, question that you know while solar is the rising star for the climate change you need this to become like a coffee conversation you need individuals to take part in this journey because we are already late and you know while governments and corporates can do a lot individuals need to take action and that's when i started my next firm minzo which is about my net zero getting the whole universe everybody individuals corporates to net zero by helping them first no their carbon footprint then reduce and then whatever you can't reduce absorb co2 out of the air to get to net zero so that's broadly me delhi girl uh, brash brought up uh, never underestimated the fact that you know i didn't limit my dreams or any gender or anything my family was by my side found the perfect co-founders in this journey who you know stood by me empowered me uh, and and that's 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 a glimpse of who i am <laughs> so there are some things i would like to tell her while she was talking about her plants i was thinking that i also have seven plants that to money plants in my <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
she's a big girl and hum unse paise mang rahe hain ki aap hame and she was so humble to even pay us for the podcast and i think this is totally commendable and this is the humbleness i didn't know i was connecting with a beautiful soul apart from the great work she's done and she is doing and this is and i think we've just met once and hats off to you tanya for all the amazing work that you're doing no oh, thank you rashi thank you and you know i think that's a lesson i learned late in life that you have to do everybody works hard but what's important is to spiritually align yourself because we have one mind and one soul and one body right we can't just take it for granted and i have i have ran a lot in life in terms of running after the next big success and next big thing but somewhere it humbled me down to realize that what matters is good work and not the valuations or the numbers you put around it so i think that's something i would leave want to listeners to see like you know i am talking of very big numbers and big things but even without that you know the success for me was the fact that i could think about doing something have the perseverance to keep doing it and achieve my target vision and you know that can be anything for anybody but i did not let go i did not uh, you know fall back to the safe options when i was in trouble or when things were not working could you like tell us and walk us through your typical day because i understand there are, there is a lot on the plate you know and then of course family is there and you know uh, family engagements and the never ending uh, you know tamasha of the family also <laughs> goes on so tell me your typical day at minzo carbon your you know, your office and you know how you spend your day with your team and then you know how the team is also utilizing ai technology to tackle the climate change how are you involved so there are two different parts that i would like to talk about one is about minzo and the second is about my day right in that question okay so in minzo what we do is and actually maybe let me ask you rashi you are such a climate conscious person do you know your carbon footprint do you know what you emit no okay then <laughs> how can i expect you to reduce something you don't know aapko problem hi nahi pata hai how can i ask you to reduce that and that's the problem i think everybody is facing right everybody knows that there is something big there's global warming temperatures are rising we need to do effort but we don't know the problem and knowing the problem is half the solution and that's what minzo does right minzo helps you know your climate identity automatically through your phone sensor data where you put nothing you know you don't have to log i went here from here i took a flight or i traveled like nothing you know it's almost like my watch which tracks my steps uh, minzo as an app tracks your carbon footprint tells you what are the activities that you do and how much carbon does that mean and then nudge you subtly to say oh maybe you can reduce this maybe you can reduce that and each solution is tailor made for a person so like for I, me i live very close you, to office did you sorry i'm stop did you just say that i am emitting carbon yes. yes each of our activity as individuals you know when we take a car and we travel from one place to other or when we just consume electricity you know all of those things emit co2 out in the air which is which is exactly why we are facing this global warming threat and that world's the temperatures have already risen beyond 1.5 degrees of the pre industrial era and which is why you are seeing that the glaciers are melting um, you're getting floods uh, climate events have become so frequent you know at one place there's scarcity of water and in places like bangalore at the other places it's extreme heat and extreme cold you know all of that is the function of just human activities and some of them are activities which are bad in terms of deforestation but some are just general you know switching the ac on and consuming electricity taking a flight traveling from one place to the other and we can't just stop living we have to keep doing that right so what's important is how do you make subtle changes in your life but yet be mindful of your consumptions to be able to create a balance in the ecosystem and that's where minzo comes in this is not a new problem this has been there for centuries the only difference we are doing is we are trying to tackle this with ai and ml 
you know instead of you manually logging things manually calculating we are creating a tech that almost like a health tracker will track your health will track your carbon emissions and based on that give you nudges you know okay it will know that the solution will be different for different people i live very close to office so it nudges me to say why are you working from home getting the whole emissions of this home just for yourself go to office but for somebody else who's traveling say 100 kilometers to come from noida it may nudge differently it may say today do you really need to travel work from home you know one flight do you want to take this flight or not you know like things like that and automatically doing that and but beyond a point as humans whatever we do we will still emit some carbon in the air right so first is reduce but whatever we can't reduce minzo helps you plant your own forest almost like you emit something and the forest absorbs it for you and you get to net zero carbon which is the vision that we are starting with and this is not like some credits this is your own asset that we'll build for you so that's minzo now to do this is has multiple different aspects right i have a full on technology team i have a full on asset development team and i have a full product team which thinks about behavior change right so there are multiple different hats i wear and these hats are very different to the hats i used to wear at solar rays which was hardcore infrastructure which was about you know finding the right asset to place to build buying land uh, then actually procuring solar panels raising money for that getting the construction done so things have changed in my life and one of the biggest question i asked myself is you know at this age after working for 20 years do i want to enter a field i know nothing about and and that was the beauty of saying why not if not now when so my typical day has changed dramatically from where i was in 2007 to now at that time it was work 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 and i think that was a bad mantra and a bad approach i did well but in the whole process i don't think i took care of my body and my mind and i have faced anxiety issues i have faced health issues which brought me into the right track that your day should be balanced so i start up today um with meditation and it's mainly pranayam breathing and then i hit the gym i do a workout and it's a balanced workout i do strength i do swimming i do yoga over days and typically after that with my breakfast time in office so the first morning is the most productive for me so that's the time i typically take out for myself i don't do any meetings i slot my day think what are the big things i have to figure out and do it and the second half is the day which i keep for meetings and the meetings are more like you know one hour product one hour tech one hour uh, marketing you know like it's, it's like a very slotted thing where team actually is already ready with a lot of the ideas and it's more brainstorming it's more like saying okay you are experts in your area i am just the outside lens who can help you consolidate this together and and uh, bring us on the right path based on what the market is saying and that's how my day is i typically try that i do dinner at home with my husband and you know even if it means that i pause work and then i resume it later i have at sacrosanct two hours with family i'm lucky in the way that my husband is also an entrepreneur so he understands um you know the the perils of this and how much and he values taking that two hours out and spending time together i'm also lucky that i stay in a nuclear family so you know my in-laws um while they want more of me they 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 understand the lacuna and that oh if a sunday lunch is there that's that's a lot you know and that's one of the things i've learned that unless you schedule out time for family for fitness you will not have it because work can consume you but it's not about just hard work it's about smart work and when you devote that time to fitness and family it is something to your mental health you think better and the quality of hours you put in becomes different so from from the early days of bcg to solar rise my number of hours used to be insane now the number of hours are under a check a limit but the quality of work time i put in is very different and i think that's a learning i wish i had given to the 20 year old tanya i'm going to ask you this again are you for real 
No, seriously, man, this is, this is like, I have no words, you know. You know, I, I honestly, while speaking to you right now, I feel I'm talking to some, some robber, you know, some AI, some person, you know. Because well, I can assure you, I'm not an AI. There is no uh, screen here and, you know, you can, I can pinch, ah, I feel it. And um, I will actually just say that, I learned it late. You have to be a good person. If you want to believe in being good, everything else falls into place. Minzo is exactly built in the concept of saying, how do we make this world a better place? You know, and I have ran after profits. I wouldn't lie, Rashi. I have ran after valuations. I have ran after money. I have ran after every ambition that I had as that uh, kid from a middle class family to say, I need this, I need that. And maybe because I have it, I can say, you know, ki, all of that is great, but being a good person and, and trying to give back because we are privileged, we are blessed, you know, and we need to appreciate and understand that. Yeah, and also one point that I took away from this conversation right now is that all strong women or all entrepreneurs who are doing great work, they follow a regime and a timetable. Yes, Nothing happens without being healthy. And this is a great point that Tanya has told us and shared with us. Okay, coming back to your next question. Hmm. Tell me about your challenges. I'm sure convincing someone with a new idea, yes. even at home, is very difficult because they have their comfort zone. You know, they don't want you to face those problems. So they tell you, Ki ye to chal hai. Kya hai? why are you? Most of the families would do that. So tell us about I'm sure it wouldn't have been easy at all. And it isn't yet also now, but... It's actually more difficult now because I have a success behind me and people yes. value that and, and discount the struggles you're going through now. You know, I will, I will for this question, I want to go back to my uh, 2010 era when I decided I want to leave BCG and I want to join a solar energy firm at a time when there wasn't even a solar policy in India and everybody thought this is like a very small sector which will keep going I know a lot of people discouraged me at that time that you know you're taking such a big risk uh, as a woman why do you want to do this you want to leave your cushy high paying job and enter into this why and uh, don't do it and don't dream such big when you dream so big you fall and, and stuff like that those same people, when I listed my firm, came and patted my back and said, oh, you were a visionary. You thought about it at that time and you implemented it. So the limited point I would like to bring from this is, if you believe in something, do it. Don't look for external validation because that external validation will immediately change as soon as they see success and will come back and haunt you if you see failure, right? So it's about what you believe. And if you are happy, even in failure, it's fine. You know, it, it doesn't matter what the external people say. So that's one of the biggest thing I felt. And that's, you know, sometimes I'm brutally harsh when it comes to something I believe in, even with family to say, it's fine. Worst case, it's not like I have some massive needs that, oh, if, if this doesn't fail, I'll be on the road and I'll be uh, waiting to find the next meal. In that way, I'm set. Sometimes we are aspirations just take something for us. You know, I read something to say the easiest way to be happy is by defining what you have vis-a-vis -vis what you need. And most people want to keep expanding the numerator of saying what I have, what I have, or bada, or bada, or bada. But you can also keep the denominator, say what I need and making that small, automatically you are in a good state and then you can take way more risks. You're way more balanced. You are uh, in a much better place to actually build something meaningful because you're not stressed on the outcome of it and you just believe in putting in good work. So that's what I would uh, like to call in terms of the child. I face these issues every day, you know, people will judge you, they will look at you, they will, um, um, to fund a new idea, they will want to know that, oh, what all have you already built, you know, so those, and in a funding time, like, like today, where last year was one of the lowest um, investment for the last seven years, it's not easy, but so is not, so is like raising a child not easy, but we as women, we do that, right, and we proudly do it, and we discount it, 
This is exactly like raising a child. What do you do? You're persistent. You're consistent. You keep giving the energy in, even though you're not asking anything in return. That's that's exactly this is. Once you believe in it so much, you can convince people around you. Beyond a point, you have to stop looking for their validation. Internal validation is what you should look for. I totally buy what she's saying because uh, today, uh, see, PM Modi has facilitated a podcaster. Nobody had ever imagined that podcasting. So when we started like five years back, mujhe to aise bol dete te aake, video bana liya. You know, why are you wasting your time? And today, those are the same people who would like to come on our podcast. They're more than welcome. I think it was good if they didn't say it, I wouldn't be here today. You know? Exactly. Sometimes so, the criticism helps you take that challenge, be gone. Yes. You know, and, but, but I was not like this, Rashi. I'll be very honest with you, right? I used to take that criticism to my heart. And I used to feel bad about myself. I used to lose confidence. I used to lose night's sleep. And I used to really like not take care of my health, both physically and mentally. I realized that very late that kuch to log kahenge, logo ka kaam hai kehna. Chodo, ye sab baate, apna kaam hai karte jana. Absolutely nice. And whenever I make my very sexy reel, you know, out there with the shyri people tell me, all my family people and like, Ki, why are you doing this? I said, because I am the desirable one. That's why. And I like to do it. What's the problem? As long as my family, my son and my husband is not saying anything. I mean, who gives a damn? And I kept going, kept going. And today, you know, honestly, I have followers because of my reels. Honestly, because, you know, they, they want to connect with me. And I feel, I actually feel good about it. That's okay. My whole brand is based on that. So I think I'm totally... And there's no harm in looking beautiful. That's okay. There's no one success mantra or no one success thing. You know, each individual should have their own definition milestone. And for somebody, it can be creating a billion dollar firm. For somebody, it can be taking care of a child. Right? And they're all the same till you look at it that way. Can you, I, I would want you to share some memorable success stories, you know, uh, of course, uh, with all your different brands and, you know, your success mantras also with it. And also highlight, you know, some positive impact of the renewable energy, you know, solutions that you are providing. And before we come to that, I want you to tell everybody, all our listeners, about the concept of renewable energy, what exactly it is, you know, what is carbon? People people know carbon dioxide, people know carbon, but, but how do you find it in daily lives? You know, where do you find it? So let's hear. So first and foremost, we are like a Goldilocks planet, right? Neither it's too hot nor it's too cold. And that's because we have an atmosphere and the atmosphere has greenhouse gases which absorb heat and retains the temperature but we have that delicate balance which as human beings we have been kind of disrupting by emitting a lot of more greenhouse gases in the air and the typical being co2 and methane now how do i emit co2 you know when i travel from one place to other i use petrol or i use diesel that's something that emits co2 when i consume electricity the electricity source is typically a conventional source of something like coal to make that and generate that you emit co2 you know so almost every action you do when you purchase something that purchase that you do whether it's a laptop or whether it's as simple as a soap or food you know each one of them emit carbon in its production. So as consuming beings, we emit CO2 and methane out in the air. Now, till it's in some limit, it's fine because that there's a delicate greenhouse balance there. The problem now is that that limit is getting broken, which means we have too much of these greenhouse gases, which is absorbing heat and making this planet warm. Because the planet is getting warm, you're seeing abrupt climate changes. You're seeing the glaciers are melting. Some areas are getting flooded. There are some areas which are completely in scarcity of water. You, you're seeing events where temperature at some places have risen drastically and some areas are extremely cold. That is all climate change. There was a prediction by scientists that if the earth warms beyond 1.5 degrees, 
you would be at a high risk it's very unfortunate that last year we breached the 1.5 degree target and now we're talking about a 2 degree problem so you know we're already on a band aid state where we have crossed the key threshold so that's broadly what global warming climate change is the important part here is this is not just a government problem or a problem of the corporates it's a problem that each one of us is a part of because our activities are what emits right while you need policy or you need corporates working on it unless the mindfulness comes in each one of us to think about our actions to consume mindfully to spend mindfully you know to be uh, economical in terms of consumptions and what we emit in terms of electricity consumption or how we travel this will not change and that's that's the whole concept about the power of individuals again coming to your shairi path boond boond se bharta sagar exactly like by small actions we have got the earth global warming by small actions we can reverse it to actually ensure that there is a planet available for our next generations else we will just consume everything and there'll be nothing left and the only option will be is to rely on mr musk and go to the musk um, and and build a planet there but i like earth and i want to stay on earth so for that we will have to put in the effort the good point here is that we can reverse it and it's a it's a it's a very important point you know because life is a full circle so if you made the mess then clean the mess i think this is what she just put it across beautifully tanya people hear these words solar wind but you don't understand what what's happening behind it right so we all have electricity at home and it comes through large transmission lines and high power voltage that comes to us but there is a place where all of this gets generated traditionally that source of generation has been coal you know you mine coal out of the earth and you use large um, machines boilers to heat steam rotate it and and make electricity right that's been something that has been going for decades however and when you do that you actually emit and co2 and pollute the earth right what if instead of coal you use another fuel and that fuel was the sun or the wind fuel which is naturally available fuel which is green which does not emit any additional co2 in the air that's the concept of renewable you know can you generate electricity from the sun or from the wind what kind of equipment do you put together to do that and how do you do that in an economical way so that it's not super expensive to generate that power that's the whole concept and one option is that you do that at your own home by putting say a solar panel on your roof or a wind turbine on your roof the second option is doing it at the same place where the coal was being generated somewhere else remotely and just getting that green power through the grid lines like any other power and that's when the revolution changes you know when you change things at source it's like saying there'll be a time when you'll get 24 hour renewable power and then you can consume with no guilt and that's what is the power of renewable uh apic inventor jaise ho you know you've actually telling people to use energy which is actually natural you're just you know it's not something that is also because excess of electricity is also you know very damage so much of uh, i'm sure it must be emitting a lot of carbon Yeah. yes because you know for every electricity that we consume which is not renewable yeah. you are emitting so much carbon and you're not even thinking about it for every car ride you do you're not even thinking about what you're doing you know and it's not like this is um, this is a the thing of the industrialization we've gone to you know, there was a time when they were only horse driven cars right they, they didn't used to have that much pollution but while you want to progress how do you progress in a mindful way so that you have a longevity of this planet and not consume and forget and i i would request all our viewers and listeners to listen to what she's saying and help her out by being the whistleblowers because if you will not speak about it people won't be mindful and this is amazing okay tanya what advice would you like to give to corporates to individuals you know people who are trying to make uh, 
uh, you know, difference into the sustainability, you know, quotient and a lot of people are doing various kind of works. Mm -hmm. But what exactly is the real sustainable solution that, you know, that should be adapted to? Let's hear about that. So one piece of advice I like to give to people is one, small is big when it comes to sustainability. Don't stop doing small actions to say, oh, I have to do something massive and big. You know, the sum of those small actions is what sustainability is all about. And that small actions has to be across your value chain, across your lifestyle, across your consumption behavior, across your buying behavior, right? Because you can keep waiting for that one magic sustainability mantra, that doesn't exist, right? It is the sum of these small, small, small parts. And that sum of small makes it big. Right. That's the first thing I would like to say. The second thing I would like to say is people should get away from this misnomer that sustainability is a cost. You know, sustainability is actually a profit center. Sustainability is about reducing, reusing, recycling, which by default means less. When you have something less, you'll spend more. You know, you may need investment, you know, like a solar plant. When you build, you spend a lot of money as upfront capex, but then you get free power. So you can't look at it as a cost right now. You have to look at it as a long-term horizon. That what is the return of that investment over a period of time? And then consider this, not just look at the upfront cost. So by default, being sustainable is being profitable or is saving money or is about generating more money and that's the first belief you have to do and you don't have to just shy away from the original investment so tell me something how many people are doing the same kind of work in india i mean i'm yeah. sure no one yeah there's no there, there i would say that more is merrier there are a lot of people there are a lot of ngos who are looking at it there is a lot of technical solutions coming in terms of how do you help individuals corporates to understand their footprints consultants are there you know so i wouldn't say i am the only one and i would actually want more and more people to come into this because this is not a one man job i alone have not got the planet to this way so i alone can't un un undo it but in terms of using AI to create an automatic calculator and building forests, you know, that's different. That's something that maybe we are only doing, right? So we found a sweet spot in terms of how do you marry different things together while making it easy, right? So, but there are a lot of different solutions and I would say, don't be biased on one. Try whatever works for you because small is big. Small actions matter. Absolutely nice. Okay, and uh, how can people join hands with you? See, there are a lot of people who have, who understand the concept. Okay. They also have some ideas to be added to the same concept. So how can they join you? I would join love for them to be our evangelists. You know, people who, um, they can, they're happy to use the app, show to the world how they can be, carbon neutral with how actions can help within the app we have a system to share learnings you know so that is something that we're building up we'd love people to contribute there because this is something that we all together have to do and um, if you're evangelist then you talk about it you know even if you can convince two more people who then go and talk to two more people it's a ripple effect because this is not some magic mantra it's about being mindful and it's about taking those small steps and you have to just encourage more and more people to do that and that's the start it's like when Gandhiji did the salt march right it was a small movement to say I will not take salt from somewhere else and what did it do it eventually got India to its path of freedom Right. So this is that small action step I would like people to take up that if you understand this importance, please talk about it. Please be vocal. Teach it to your kids. Ask your friends. Point them out. Are you sure you want to do this? Right. Help them out. That's the only way we can move forward. You've done amazing work for so many years and you're still doing. What is that one success mantra that you've just been following? I think the one I think if I were to say, I think it'll, it'll be hard work and persistence. Like it'll be persistence. There've been times when things have not gone well and I was ready to give up. And, and if I would have given up, then I wouldn't be here. And there've been times when things are not easy. Uh, you know, entrepreneurship, I would say, is a roller coaster ride with 
more lows than highs people only look at the highs everybody and then they think that's all it is but each day is a struggle so just keep going on and being persistent is the the core value i still believe and i think that's true about a lot of other things it's about being persistent in your marriage in your relationships with your family about raising your kids so that that is the mantra i would i would really urge people to you know don't give up believe in it and keep putting in the hard work there's nothing called a free lunch <clears throat> see you your experience over the years what is that one advice you would like to give to the startup world or people who want to just you know become an entrepreneur they have no idea also and they just go here and there for for you know training co- you know courses and how to become an entrepreneur so what is that one advice you would like to give over to you Ashay, what I'll say is, you know, don't follow entrepreneurship because it's sexy. You know, it's the talk of the town. It's about valuations. It's about quick money. Entrepreneurship is hard. There are there are times when there are more lows than highs. You know, build capability first. Learn. Hardcore skills are critical, and then get to a time when you believe that you have something meaningful and idea that you want to persistently put your time and energy on it. don't just enter it into a rush because that's the fashion of the day right first build capability and then use that capability to genuinely deliver where a place you have something different because for every successful startup there are um, multiple of failed ones which you don't talk about so don't look at that one success point this is a marathon it's not a sprint so first be ready for the marathon you can't just get up and start running right you train so train build and then do and don't just get glamorized by that finish line that you see other people on let's come to relationships okay so whatever little we know about you that uh, there has been a change in your life and you know you are at a better space now what is one relationship advice because जब लड़ाई करते हैं तो तो भी तो काबिन हमें मिट करते ही हैं सो लेट्स हियर ऑन दैट वेल आई मे नॉट बी द बेस्ट पर्सन टू गिव रिलेशनशिप एडवाइस आई माई सेल्फ गॉन थ्रू अ लॉर्ड ऑफ अप्स एंड डाउन इन रिलेशनशिप्स यू नो हैव नॉट हैड अ वेरी गुड स्टार्ट विद इट बट टुडे आई वुड से आई एम इन अ मच बेटर प्लेस सो लर्निंग द हार्ड वे आई वुड से टॉक कम्युनिकेट the thing that makes and breaks relationships is communication gussa aa raha hai baat karo pyar aa raha hai baat karo express karo when you hold back and you don't uh, communicate and express to the other person they can't look inside you and you know figure out as a mirror what's going on and it, that tension will keep building building being like get come out somewhere else right if you communicate and you talk and you feel like it's a journey that you're doing together because relationships are about companionship right no everybody can be uh, is okay to be alone right but when you let somebody see you the unadulterated you that's when the beauty opens up right so this is a two way street you can't communicate when you don't want to listen because if you are tr- saying that oh, i want to tell you about what's going with me you have to have to have that patient full listening when the other person is telling you about you for me i think i failed in that miserably at once in life you know i couldn't communicate well and i started building barriers around me and i learned it the hard way and i think i would advise everybody to not do that mistake be open be over communication never hurts in relationships also one thing very important that you just put across is that over communication because आई फील दैट अगर आप बात कर रहे हो तो आप सामने वाले को पहचान पा रहे हो और अगर आप बात ही नहीं कर रहे हो तो आप पहचानोगे कैसे यू नो एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल टूडे एट योर यू नो बेटर स्पेस आफ्टर फेलिंग एंड देन गेटिंग बैक अगेन टू लाइफ आई थिंक दे लर्न इट द हार्ड वे and <laughs> i wish i was taught this before you know to the power of balance the power, the importance of not just a uh, aspiring career but the family you know and your mind and physical health these things you learn by failing i wish i wouldn't have failed and then learned 
that's okay because I think uh, uh, वो भी जरूरी है हर एक हर एक फेलियर भी जरूरी होता है मुझे लगता है हर एक दोस्त जरूरी होता है हर एक फेलियर भी जरूरी होता है यू नो डेफिनेटली so for sure so the only thing i would want to say to all the women out there is dream big and don't put a gender bias to your dream okay because dreams don't have gender so just believe in it and like the nike slogan says go for it get it done just do it wonderful tanya single we gained some invaluable insights into the renewable energy landscape today get in touch with her her detail email id is available on the on the podcast and on the post connect with her tanya aapka bahut bahut thanks hai kiya bye thank you thank you rashi thank you friend